So we've got David, <laughs> pronouns he, him, uh, is a theist who says that there are only two genders, and we're happy to talk to you, David. I promise we'll be nice until we aren't. Uh, David, you're on the line. How are you doing today? Damn right, I better get present. Uh, <laughs> <what's> up, man? <laughs> we did um, promise. Uh, okay, cool. So, look, I'm not like I'm. I'm very accepting of things, right? But the thing is, yeah. I'm wondering the question. I, I'm wondering why. Okay, so we know that. Okay, so. In my opinion, there are two genders because one mm -hmm. has a period and one doesn't. One gives birth and one can't. Now, what's the whole thing? Why are there multiple genders? Can you explain that? So, yeah, so I, I can explain it, but like I think it would be better to just focus on what you just said because I think that'll get us there. Um, so you said sure. uh, one gender has a period and gives birth and the other doesn't. So when right. my mom had a hysterectomy, did she stop being a woman? No, of course not. Okay, but she doesn't have a period and she can't give birth. So what gender is she? She's a female, you know. Right, but like if your criteria is giving birth and having a period, are there other criteria upon which you can rely? Um, I mean, when you're, when you're uh, born, aren't you assigned a gender by your genetics? No, you're assigned a gender by or a sex by your genitalia, but ambiguous right. genitalia, genitalia that can't easily be determined, are more common than like IQs over 140. They they happen all the time. So like, if an intersex person has you know super ambiguous genitalia and we can't really tell what it is, do they not have a gender or or what's going on with that? No, you're right. You're right. So there there are no rare cases where people. Do you have both, or like you said, it's un undefinable, but they get to a certain point where they either can give birth or they can't. I mean, there might be the cases where they can do both, I guess, but I mean, that would make it up there. So, so, you know, give, give birth or you can't. What if you're born without a uterus, but you do have a vagina? Are you a boy? No, you're still a female. Okay, but you can't give birth. Right. I mean, that's just a, uh, wouldn't that be a, um, what's that called? A, there's a, there's a word that when the, the, the cell comes, is not, dang, sorry, I don't, I'm not prepared for this, but what's, there's a word for it. Uh, mutated. It's a, it, it, that's like a mutation, right? A mutation. Like, just, just, just an anomaly. Right. But the yeah, thing but, is, like we talked about earlier, even if it's only like 1% of the population, that's millions and millions and millions of people. So like, right. why wouldn't you count them and, and ask them, you know, what we should address them as? Right. The, the, mm, the well, key here that I'm trying to get to is that even if, even if we go to genetics, there are men with XX allosomes we call it De La Chapelle syndrome. Some or all of the SRY gene can translocate over to the y uh, to the X chromosome. And so you have XX males. You can also have types of De La Chapelle syndrome where you don't have X, uh, an SRY gene at all. SRY gene is generally what we talk about as the on-off switch for, for male development, but it isn't always. Because there are, here's a fun fact, other genes that produce testes and ovaries and everybody has them. And so like, you have, you know, an epistatic event up, upstream where you still have, you know, a, a male development. You have XX chromosomes. And similarly, we have Sawyer syndrome. You have a woman with XY chromosomes. There are case studies of women with XY chromosomes who have gotten pregnant and given birth to healthy children. Are they actually men? Um, we talk about the ability to give birth. Again, women can lose the ability to give birth or they can never have it at all. They could be born infertile. They could be born without a uterus. They could be born you know, with, with, with a, a tilted uterus. They could have all sorts of issues. Um, you talk about penises and vaginas. Well, there's a lot of in-between on those. We talk about hormone washes earlier on. Erica did an amazing discussion on, on, on hormone washes in utero. Those go all sorts of different ways and there isn't two options on those either. And also what's really most important is that we're talking about how every single determining factor in sex has a lot of variation. Sex and gender are also different things. And gender is a social presentation. It's, it's, it's something that we, we build off of 
the the culturally expected behaviors based around roughly someone's sex. But the honest truth is, if you study gender across cultural lines, excuse me, you cannot boil gender down, nor can you predict gender from sex. Um, and there are a bunch of cultures. I'm going to go ahead and link this in the chat here. Here's a map you can explore. This is in the chat now. Mm. There are cultures all over the world that have more than two genders, that have three or four or five different genders that they recognize um, because of the different presentations that people express. And so, so, like, the key here is that sex and gender are different things, and neither one of them is a strict binary. So hmm. kind of to, yeah, add I mean, on to, what, or to add on to what Force is saying here, David, right? Like, so Force just gave you a couple of examples of sort of exceptions to this generalization of, you know, you're, you're born and let's talk about sex. This sounds to me like what you're talking about is, is sex. Sex and gender are distinct things, but let's talk about sex, right? So Force is talking about how there are exceptions to the general binary that we tend to, or have traditionally considered male and female. So, you know, take it to like a different example, right? Like if I took you to a meadow of flowers and we're walking down the path and I say, hey, we're about to come up on this meadow of flowers. Um, the two kinds of flowers that are here are purple and red. And then we roll up and you see that like one out of every hundred flowers or 10 out of every hundred flowers are actually purple. They're not blue or red. Would it be accurate then to say that the field of flowers contains only two colors of flower? Because um, to me, it wouldn't. It doesn't really matter how few the examples are, whether they're 1% or 5% of the flowers in the field. And similarly, folks who are intersex do represent exceptions to this general binary amongst other kinds of exceptions to the binary of, of uh, male and female that we've traditionally assigned. So I think it's it's fair to say that at least with regard to sex, right, for us correct, as we talked about earlier, it's it's not necessarily binary. It's, it's more accurate to say that it is bimodal. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, thanks for bringing that up. It makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I look, I'm a theist, but I mean heavily towards science. You know, I don't like dumb things like convince me, right? Of course. Uh, yeah. but wouldn't, oh, these, yeah. like, wouldn't these anomalies be necessary for there to be um, like a equilibrium in the genders? If it's just male and female, that would be dangerous, I think. Wouldn't there have to be like little in betweens here and there? to help us, you know, continue our, uh, I guess, our, our, our normal uh, gene pool instead of, like, just male-female all the time? Because I, I feel like that would be bad if it were like that without the anomalies <clears throat> or mutations, right? Um, are, are you, are, so is what you're asking, why don't we see more people who represent sort of an in-between condition that that would provide more variation to the population and, and would be overall good? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like having that, those different, the, the differences is, is, I mean, I'm not a bi biologist. I'm not, I don't know any of this stuff. I, I've just watched a lot of documentaries. I've taken uh, some classes, but. Uh, I lean more towards the like astronomy side, but anyways, uh, that's why I don't know about this stuff too much. But, <laughs> but what I've seen, it's it's more of like, wouldn't it be necessary to have these mutations for our species to continue in a healthy way? If you didn't have any, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be like dangerous? So it it, it kind but, of depends because like yes, genetic diversity is necessary. Um, a lot of times with intersex conditions, which is you know we're talking about like differences in sex determination, things like that, you know, there, there are a lot of those that are going to cause infertility. And so like that wouldn't matter really. Um, but really what it, it, what's more important about it is that when we're talking about this, we're talking about human beings. Um, and so like humans are unique in the animal kingdom and that we are the only ones that can express gender. Um, like I said a minute ago, gender is a purely social thing. It's something that is very much deals with your internal sense of who you are. Um, and so you can't go ask a chimpanzee, what does it feel like to be a boy? You know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. And I guarantee, you know, you and I both use he, him pronouns. I promise you, there are a lot of differences between what you consider male, masculine boy feelings and behaviors and things like that. And then what I have, um, because just, that's just how it is, man. Um, not even yeah. if we grew up in the same culture, like here I am with my weird shit and here you are with your weird shit. We're going to feel different. And so like what, what we have here 
rather than looking at it purely from a, a biological perspective and trying to get into this like Mott and Bailey argument of like, it's biologically possible, therefore human rights, <laughs> like, cause that shouldn't be the conversation. <laughs> Instead, it's, right. it's more interesting, I think, in, in my opinion, to just be asking questions and like talking to people who have different opinions and different expressions of gender and like healing, like, what are they feeling right now? How does it work for me to exist in their world and them in my world? Does it bother me or matter to me at all? If so, why? If not, why? Maybe it should a little bit. Maybe it's something interesting that we can talk about. Basically, like, I think it's really, and this is me on my soapbox, forgive me, but like, I think it's important that we do away with all the parts of gender that suck and keep the parts that are fun. Um, and, and in that way, you know, do away with the, 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 you know, systemic oppression and do away with the judgment and do away with the expectation and keep the expression and the, and the excitement and the, the joy of discovery and the personal development. Um, and so like, yeah, you could point to some weird biological thing out of it that it has this or that benefit. I don't know if you'd find one, I don't know if you'd find a detriment either, but I think it's more important to just point to the sociological aspect of it or the anthropological aspect of it and say like, Hey, this is something cool that humans do. Let's learn more about it. And let's talk to people who have different experiences than me. And you should call into the Transatlantic Call-In Show and talk to some trans folk and ask about their ideas of what gender is all about for them. I think that would be beneficial as well. Yeah, I mean, look, what I believe is, is um, okay, well, I feel like a lot of this stuff is being politicized and mainly because mm -hmm. of the pushback from religious people, right? But I also feel that yeah. religious people have been very toxic to the point where it's, it's happening, you know, you know, when, eventually you corner something to a point where it, it fights back. Right. So that, that part I understand, but the fact that it's been politicized to a point where it's now become a toxic, uh, not, not to say that the people themselves are toxic. The, the, the leaders of these people have been pushing, I guess, cause they make money off of this stuff. So for them, it's, it's, you know, it's a piggy bank or whatever. But then again, I do respect the people that do really, feel this way or are actually uh the the anomalies right but again i i feel like the the people the the reason why our species continues is because there are male and female and if there are in betweens then i would say those are mutations or anomalies that it, without us they would die out not to be offensive against anymore just saying you know it's that's how it would work so, um so they would be you know, just be mutations or anomalies Right. So just to be clear, when, when I, I want to be clear with you, I don't think that you're trying to be offensive to anybody. I think you're asking these questions in earnest and that's why we're having this conversation in the first place. Um, when you refer to people as anomalies though, it, you, you have to understand, oh, it's, it's, it's dehumanizing in, in a bit of a way. No, no, so no. I, again, I I'm not trying to way. call you out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I think you do. I'm not trying to call you out here. Yeah. Um, no, no. yeah. but it's, I think I'm it's about important to remember right? like, yeah. If you remember, I don't know if you were listening a little while ago, after the first call, I went on a whole rant about different types of thinking in biology. Did you hear that at all? I mean, I've been listening for like over an hour or almost two, so maybe I, I listened okay. to a lot of Okay, it was a long yeah. time ago and it was a, a, yeah. But one thing that I brought up was that we have different types of thinking in biology, the same way that we have different ways of fighting to win different types of fights. There's different martial arts styles. There's different ways of thinking in biology to attack different problems. Um, and what I think you're putting on here is, is, you know, uh, the, there's, there's typological thinking where you like, this is this type of thing. This is, you know, this is what a primate looks like. This is what a cell looks like. This is what a, a, a mitochondria looks like, whatever it is. Um, there's tree thinking, which is all thinking about like, how does this represent the evolutionary chain? What benefit does this provide? When did this come up and why? What was the context for this kind of thing? And then there's population thinking, which is, you know, let's look at the actual distribution of the entire population, all the variation within it, and see how that plays out statistically and what that looks like in a real set in like real time. And what I'm what I'm hearing from you is a lot of typological thinking. This is what a male and a female is. Even though, you know, as we've demonstrated a minute ago, you don't have a way of ex actually defining male and female without excluding somebody um, that would actually right. should should fit in that group. And you're coming at it with tree thinking. Humans need to survive through sex. And so these these, you know, anomalous people, the, these 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 rarities, these people that are you know coming up so rarely with with the differences, 
they're actually, you know, not the norm and therefore do they really, are they something we should pay attention to or, or, or they should be representative of a society? And what I'm asking you to try is this population thinking, saying like, here's the actual total distribution of humans. Most men are XY and most women are XX and most men have a penis and most women have a vagina and most men produce sperm and most women do that. And like go on and on and on. But as long as you're just really, really remembering to put that word most in there and remember the people who don't fall into that most that there's a varium of continuation a, a, a continuum of variation between them um and that there th th that doesn't mean that you have to say okay well now i'm going to define ten thousand new sexes it just means yeah we can still say here's these two groups these two major groups and then there's a lot of other people too and that's okay and, and and just kind of let that be a thing that's allowed in the way. You know what I mean, that's that's kind of what I would advocate. Yeah. For. And again, you it's just as enough. Uh -huh. We are still only talking about sex. We still haven't even covered gender yet. Right. No, you know what? Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, uh, you know, what? it's what sucks mostly is that everything that's been politicized and, and there's these groups that are extremists that are, I guess, they're outliers. Uh, because I've seen, you know, normal things come out of regular people who say, oh, I'm trans, you know, and I don't accept these things, and I don't accept certain things, and that's cool, you know, And but then again, you have morons on the religious side who are not only insulting them, everybody, everybody's down to hell, apparently, right? I, I don't believe in hell, I'm not a Christian, I'm just saying, I believe in God, just so you guys know, but I, <clears throat> I feel like this whole toxic pushback from both sides is making it worse for, I guess, society as a whole if I, I so i guess i guess that's what we're trying to say here right that we should just accept people for who they are without the toxic part of it right yeah. right that's that's the long and short of it and and again you know it's a, when it when it comes to gender understanding that gender is a social construct means that it is necessarily non-binary it, it can't possibly because it is something that we made up whether or not it's something innate within us is irrelevant because it's something that varies from culture to culture, to generation to generation, person to person, day to day, it can't possibly have only two categories. It can't possibly do. Even if we name two categories, that doesn't mean they're the only ones. And as we say over and over, as or at least I do, you know, nature does whatever nature wants to do. Our jobs as yeah. biologists is to try to take that and put it into boxes. And that doesn't always work. It, it's like, you know, if you look at a map, a map from the 1800s is better than no map, but Google Earth is better than an 1800s map. But the Earth is what the Earth looks like, and Google Earth is still wrong. Every map is wrong, but some of them are useful. And in science, every model, every theory is wrong, but some of them are useful. Because all we're doing is trying to define and put labels on reality. But reality is what reality is. And if reality defies our definitions, that's our problem, not reality's. So if we see people who express themselves and have internal feelings outside of the binary that we've labeled, that's not their problem. That's the problem of the model. That's our issue to solve as a society. If we see intersex people and we're like, well, I only know of this male and this female group, that's not the intersex person's problem. That's the model's problem. And, and you know, as I said a minute ago, biology is the study of generalities, and generalities are generally wrong. So it's okay that we say, you know, here's male and female, and it's okay if we say here's man and woman. That's totally fine. We're allowed to do that. But we don't get to take away the humanity of people who fall outside those those norms, those binaries. Hope that makes sense. Right. right. That, yeah, that that makes total sense. I, I, I'm about that. So I'm, just because I'm a thief doesn't mean that I'm here to, like, you know, bash people. No, every, every human deserves to live happily. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just here to learn, I guess, what you just said made, made sense and that that's good, you know, because I'm, I'm also in science or whatever and I'm studying. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, also I have a yeah. quick, quick question. Uh, yeah. what kills, like what kills mites? Cause I have a cat that I found and now, now I'm infested with mites. Mites. If I, can, if, if I can ask that here, if I can ask that, ask that here. If not, I'll just Google it. You say, 
mice the rodent or mites the little no, creepy no, crawlies? No, no, no. Mites, mites, like ear mites, little tiny ones. How do I get? Oh, Flynn. Flynn. Um, just I don't know. Uh, Orc ass maybe. Uh, that I that I okay. So you don't Sorry, know. Oh, uh, I would do. Well, <laughs> if that I, if you have pets and you want to be safe, uh, diatomaceous earth is is great. Diatomaceous earth is just ground up silica. They're these tiny little microorganisms called diatoms, which make their cell walls yeah. out of silica. They're literally like bacteria covered in glass, basically. Um, yeah. oh. And uh, you grind those up and you make this really insanely soft powder. Uh, and any arthropod that gets into it, it's going to clog up all their spiracles, their breathing holes, and they're going to die weirdly. But it won't hurt like your cats and dogs. And so like that might be a good investment. Again, I am not in pest control. I am, I am a dumbass no, on the uh, internet I, I, who argues science for fun. <laughs> that, I, I know about the diet. Everything you said, I know, luckily. But I guess people that are out there might need that information. But anyway, so, yeah, so I, I guess that's it. So thanks for the call. Yeah. Uh, really quick before I let you go, Erica, I just talked for this entire call. Do you have anything you wanted to add? No, dude, you were on a roll. I was listening to you talk and I was like, this is like, you. this is, I know you, this is like your topic. I was like, you got this, man. Like you, you're, you're on this. The only thing I would have to add is that if I found out I had a bunch of mites in my house, my solution would be to either set it on fire or move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, it sucks. It sucks. Um, I mean, they're a little annoying, you know, I just want to get rid of them. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Uh, thanks guys for the information. It's, uh, it's, um, my Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, David. I, take care. I appreciate it. Take care, David. And if you ever want to call in and talk about why you believe in God, we'd love to do that too. I mean, I, I, I yeah, sure. Uh, but I, you know, you guys don't uh, get put together often. Uh, but yeah, so it's science. I, mean, I think we spoke about it before. Uh, for us, it's uh, science. Yeah. Really did. But uh, I guess I don't want to take more time with you. Uh, more of your time. That's fine. Well, yeah, no, call, call back in next time Erica and I are on and, 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 and present your argument for God, because I'd love to talk about it with you. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. I take care, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. See you later, dude. Bye-bye. We got uh, oh. David uh, calling back to talk about creationism. Fuck you, David. That's We're starting the fight early. It's, it's, how dare you? Uh, it's, it's, welcome to the thing that you're on again. Hey, tell us why you believe in God quickly. Oh so, man, um, am I? Can you guys hear me fine? Or yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Okay, cool. So yeah, so the reason I called back is because um, I had some people that were saying that I was. Uh, well, somebody said I was there was cogn cognitive dissonance because I can I accept what you say. But that's just pure ignorance to say that because science is fact. And you can't use it for your arguments. But anyways, um, let's see. So about God and creation. Mm -hmm. I believe he exists. Uh, the science points to it. You know, it, it all makes What's sense. Si which science in particular? Pick, pick the most compelling bit of science that points to God and tell us that. The creation story. Genesis. It's, it's, it's correct. It's actually correct. Which one? Which creation story? Because there's a bunch. There's only one. Um, and it's I understand one, one uh, or it's Genesis one or Genesis two, because those are different creation stories. I read them. They're the same things. Uh, just that they're told, uh, in a different manner, but they're the same things. Um, but yeah, they're correct. Genesis one, the universe was created with the earth and the, the stars or whatever. And well, the universe and the stars, then came the earth and the sun well together in a way. And, I mean, uh, as far as I under, as far as I understand, the hermeneutics of Genesis one versus Genesis two. In Genesis one, when God initially creates uh, humans, He creates a dom, but it's a, it's not the proper noun, so it just means He creates humanity. Versus the second Genesis story, where He refers to Adam by His first name uh, as the proper noun, Adam, uh, meaning a person. So, as far as I know, those are two distinct uh, creation stories, and I believe that's what like Nathaniel Wright holds as well. Um, also, I don't think this is the same David from earlier for us. This is a different David. This is David from Arizona, not David from Arkansas. No, this is, is it? This oh is my God. What? Is this, this is the same one? Is this call. the same? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry, David. Yeah. It could be our call screener might have gotten the, um, 
the thing wrong. So and David's. Oh, okay. okay. All right. That's fine. All right. So this is the same David then that just called about gender a minute ago, okay, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's me. Okay, sorry, David. Sorry, David. Oh, you're good. Um. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so what do you are... what what makes you find that compelling? How do you think you find this compelling enough to be um a, a a sort of literal truth, a true story? Because okay, well, man was created. Man existed before Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve existed after man came, and then they procreated with each other, which and then eventually with the rest of mankind, which created the rest of the people. It, I mean, it makes sense. Scientifically, it makes total sense with the whole beginning of the universe and the stars and the sun or whatever. It, I mean, I understand that you guys might have a little bias, and that's the problem. No offense, but it's a little bit of a problem that people have a bias and they tend to not look at everything with a clear head. They look at it with an anger, which is fine because Christians can be hard for people to look at religion in a, in a, in a good way, I guess you could say. Uh, so the here's here's the thing, Earth and Heaven are created together in the beginning, at the at the first one, which doesn't make so it, it is in Genesis one. Earth and Heaven are created together in the beginning, which doesn't make any sense. The universe is you know thirteen point eight billion years old. The Earth is only four point six billion years old. So those are two different events that happened at different times. The Big Bang was billions of years before the formation of the Earth. So Genesis one one. The creation of the heavens and the earth together doesn't really track mm -hmm. unless you want to say they were two different events and it just says he made them it doesn't say when okay but then later on it says that he made light before he made sun and stars and all these other things so where was the light coming from without those things it sounds like it's a sequential business he also makes plants before he makes the sun so how do these plants live without photosynthesis so like to say that these things follow the flow of the actual scientific understanding of, of, of the creation of the, of the development of the earth, that just doesn't track. And even if it did, because there are creation stories out there that sound great, you know, the, the, the Lakota creation story about how Ea, which was the being that encompasses all things, squeezed a bit of himself to make the earth. That sounds a lot like planetary formation. And he squeezed it, this earth so hard that the blue blood ran out and that's the oceans yeah if they had carbonaceous chondrites there and and you know, the the everything's going to sink to the bottom sure that kind of tracks and 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 things like those you can kind of paint a picture but i bet you don't believe in those and so like with this one you're accusing us of being you know uh obstinate and saying that like here's the evidence right in front of us and we're not buying it because we have some bias in our heads i would accuse you of doing the same thing this story very clearly does not comport with reality, and when it does, it's circumstantial, as opposed to the other way that we have it, which is, you know, evidence-based and has nothing to do with a god. As Laplace said, we have no need for that hypothesis of a god. I'm, I'm glad I called, uh, because looking at the comments, I'm looking at everyone here, and I, unfortunately, I, that's the thing. I feel like intelligence is a very rare, very rare trait, and I, I can see it in you, Forrest. It's just that you you get clouded by, uh, I guess, I'm intelligent. the the way that you were raised and people you were around, um, it kind of. Oh no, I was raised around a lot of religions, actually. No, that's fine. I know, I know, but you went to school and you understood more than other people do. The people in the comments, though, these people are, the majority are like just, they're. they're you're leaching information off of you guys, the actual people who do research. Now, hold on now. And don't don't insult our comments section. You've been nice so far. Don't be mean to our commenters. They're insulting me. They're insulting you. Am I not allowed I, to okay, fire I know. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really intrigued by something you said, David. I've been mulling it over. I've been puzzling and puzzling the, the, sure. since you've been talking since then. So, so you, you're, you're saying that the creation story God, what, like, creates humans or do humans evolve and then adam and eve are created and then they like what's going on there do you do you accept an ancient age for the earth and evolution and do you just believe god uh spurs yeah, evolution accept, with it what, accept, what do you suppose I, goes on there? i accept all of science why because it makes sense i've studied it myself you know so i'm not just some person that's talking out of not knowing it's unfortunate because i've seen lots of debates with christians who've actually studied science as well and their their arguments are horrible but yeah, I do accept evolution because it's it it makes sense. There can't be 
something in this. You, you, you cannot, God could not have made things not make sense in the universe that is supposed to make sense. And that in itself is why you have so many people asking questions, oh, how, how did uh, things come to be? Because if you could tell that God existed, then there would be no point in us bettering ourselves to reach a higher level. But, I mean, so far, uh, you know, reading the comments, it's kind of unfortunate seeing how people are to be arrogant and biased. And that's unfortunate because you'll, all you have to do is clear, it, clear your head and you'll understand more. So do you suppose, David, when you say you're, you know, you're a theist, right? Are you taking the, a, a general theist perspective or like a Christian perspective or Muslim perspective or, or just like where, where are you at? My perspective, the only one that's okay. to be taken cool. correctly. Right. I mean, it's clear in day that Islam and Christianity are plagiarized uh, versions of Judaism. And that's the fact that people don't see that. And I mean, unfortunately, you guys attack Christianity, which is fine. But then again, you're you're attacking something that doesn't make sense in the first place. So it makes the argument kind of null and people are learning incorrectly what to argue about. And you're insulting they feel morally superior. They feel, they feel in, more intelligent than in reality. It's, it's neither. They're just spewing a bunch of hatred towards another group who, spew, who is spewing hatred at them. So it just becomes this really toxic culture that we have now where everybody's fighting because of beliefs, for example. So, so quick question. You, you talked about, you know, uh, uh, you used the word spewing, and that reminded me. Uh, the, the, in, I believe it's the Congo, uh, there's, they have a creation, uh, story of Mbombo yeah, was know. the creator of, of everything. He vomited up the scars in the sky and then vomited the earth as well. And, and the, the water from his vomit dried up and that's where we get land and the rest of the seas is just, you know, the wetness left. Why don't you believe that Mbombo vom? and this is not a joke, this is actually the, this religion. I'm really, I'm Why really, do you not believe that Mbombo vomited up the earth? Why do you believe that God created it in the way that it says in the Bible? Because in the Bible, if people actually read instead of insulting me or my intelligence, not you exactly, but the majority of the comments in here who don't think for themselves, unfortunately, the Bible says that God went to different peoples before he went to Abraham, and they all rejected him. So he must have taught me these things, taught me these things, and then eventually they just in, ended up worshiping and creating their own gods, which is the problem that Israel had as well. And But the good thing is that Israel, they actually followed through with a lot of things, and he taught them more, and whatever happened. And, you know, and we got the whole creation story, blah, 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 and it makes total sense. These other places, though, where God went to beforehand, they, you know, they ended up changing everything on their own, making their own gods, and whatever, you know? So... That's, that's uh, in the Bible. So, is the rest of the Bible correct, or just just Genesis? Just the Tanakh. Tanakh is correct. The 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 rest of the New Testament that doesn't exist. That's all, all just Roman created. Okay. Uh, so hold on, just one second. Let me find Kings is in the uh, the Old Testament, right? Yes. So, is everything in Kings correct? I mean, if there's a lineage there, then it should be. What would you say that's wrong cool. about it? Um, uh, so here in Kings, we're talking about the creation of or the building of King Solomon's temple. Um, and we are making a pool. It's called a molten sea. Ten cubits from one brim to the other, round all about. Uh, height was five cubits. That's not necessary. Um, and a line of 30 cubits composite round about. So that means... That the let's uh, draw this out here. So in Kings, we have a circular pool. The circumference is equal to 30, right? Uh, and the diameter, let me see here. Yep. So 10 cubits from one brim to the other. Diameter is 10. Circumference over diameter equals pi. And in this case, pi equals 3. So that's wrong. And that's in your Bible. So why do you believe the rest of it if it doesn't do math right? Well, I mean, honestly, I'm not even looking at the stuff right now. I'm talking about the creation story, which is correct. And there's a thing. There's a person right. But you said the Old right? Testament is correct, and that's in the Old Testament. That doesn't make it incorrect. I mean, 
just because some of the numbers might be wrong or maybe it was translated incorrectly or or maybe you did the math incorrectly, but it should have worked. I, 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 mean, I can do it, 30 over 10 pretty easily in my head. That's I like guess what you but here's what, what I, we understand, David, is you're accusing us of being biased based on our upbringing. You're saying that because I went to school and I learned a bunch of biology that I've been trained to reject the Bible. But when I just showed you really, really basic math, your response verbatim was just because the math is incorrect doesn't mean it's incorrect. And that you no, can't say wrong. that one breath oh. after saying everything in this is correct. So everything in is it correct except for this math, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong. There's some other reason. And I'm sitting here saying, I have no evidence for this God. Therefore, I don't believe it's well, real. And you're saying okay, so the what? lack of evidence I have is a result of some weird bias and some additional whatever. And I, I don't think I'm the one with the bias problem here. Can we agree that there were buildings that existed back then that were large and huge and they exist until today, a lot of them? So uh, the math, the math that these people had, I mean, it was correct. So either you did something wrong or something was not done correctly, but these buildings existed. I don't know how to answer that question beyond that. I mean, right, but what I'm saying, like, the pyramids are older than the Bible, right? The pyramids are significantly older than the Bible, and the math was great for them. So whoever wrote this in the Bible and then translated it a million times, somewhere along the line, whether it was at the beginning or where it was written or translated, whoever, somehow or another, pi calculates the three. So, like, let's say it's a translation problem. Let's say that they got it perfectly right in the original text. It actually calculated the 3.14159, blah, 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 and it was perfect. How do you know that the rest of it wasn't mistranslated? Something else in there got translated wrong. Because if 2,000 years before the Bible was written, we had enough math to build pyramids, which fantastic mathematical feats, and then we have this apparently this perfect math in the Bible, and now 2,000 years later, we have it wrong, how do you know the rest of the story didn't get fucked up somehow? I mean, you're asking questions here without going back to the whole creation story. I mean, buildings exist, and they existed back then, and they, the people that read this Bible or the book at that time, they were making these buildings during that time. So either something messed up, but the buildings did exist, and they do exist till today, some of them. So I don't know what... All right, but you don't need to calculate pi to build a building, do you? Forrest, Forrest, rip to your uh, rip to your pyramids, but the temple's built different. Literally built different. Right. Red just, red just, red. I, I, I guess like, what, what's, what I'm struggling with, David, is like it because it seems it seems to be just so to me. Like it, it seems like you're saying, you know, the uh, the Genesis story, it, the the Genesis story in the Pentateuch is 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 quite compelling to me. Uh, none of the other creation stories are correct because they're all pulling from Genesis. But to that, I, I would kind of say, well, you know, some of those other stories came first. Right, some of the Assyrian and other Mesopotamian cultures that that they, you know, they had stories of creation that came before the version in Genesis. Um, right. you, you know, you, you're talking about how like there's there's bits and pieces of Genesis that seem to map to reality, but as Forrest said, like the the order of creation is all incorrect. And and I understand, as I understand, the the way that a lot of religious folks, uh, Abrahamic followers, kind of get around this is saying like, okay, well Genesis might be allegorical, and if that's the stance you want to take, then I, I don't really have a problem with that, but it sounds to me like you're saying that Genesis itself is compelling literal. when taken literally. It's literal. Uh, I mean, the, I, I just by hearing the answers that I received from Forrest and looking at the comments, I can see that you're Red is being clear-headed. You know, like you're thinking with a bias against religion, which is understandable. But then again, I mean. I'm being. I'm, I'm reading the comments. text critically, and I'm giving you the exactly what it says. I, I don't have a bias. I'm reading the text literally and telling you this thing is different than that thing. The two, the chapter one and chapter two are different stories, and neither of them comport to reality. I'm gonna go grab my Bible. I'll be right back. You, you're reading it incorrectly. That's the problem. If you read it with an actual mind to see the truth then you'll understand but if you're reading just trying to be just to be mad at religion and try to like aha me then that's wrong i mean you have to 
I understand that this show, they want to counter the theists, but in reality, it's just all they're doing is just, uh, I mean, one day soon, I have my own channel. I'm not going to shout it out or anything. Uh, but one day the truth will come out and science will support it. And then people here will feel not good about the things that they said. Unfortunately, I mean, I have people in the comments reading things. I, I saw one that said that, oh, the creation story is not about Ubunga or whatever. It's about some cre uh, giraffe pooping the earth into existence. It's like the people like that exist on both sides. People just like that are they're 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 the problem. They exist on both sides. They exist on the theistic side and they exist on the atheistic side. And that's the problem that we have. People like that. They, that's the problem. I mean, when. So, David, yeah, so Forrest has his Forrest has his Bible out. If if how about we just go through Genesis? Are you going through Genesis or Kings, Forrest? Yeah, let's just let's just well, let's go through one part of Genesis. Oh, so I promise you, I've I've read this thing. Like you can see, I've got, I don't know if it's going to be functional because I've got my Bible yeah, is full highlighter. of highlighter and notes. Like I've I've been through this guy, right? I'm not like just pulling up whatever atheist meme here, right? I've read this critically and it's not so here here at the beginning it in, in Genesis one is right is the book of Job let me ask you another question really quickly before I move on. Is the book of Job accurate? Do you think that's true? I do think that's a, it's a uh looks like a poetic kind of thing going on there. It's not Okay, but but is it real? Did, in, in the book of Job, it has a long quote from God. Did God actually say the things that the Bible says God said in the book of Job? Is right. Is right. Is I right. Mean, again, it's po it's poetic. That book is poetic. So if if he said it, it, it had to have been in a. I don't know if the word euphemism is correct. Now I'm not sure. Uh, but is or, right. But I don't know the correct word for it. But he. Okay. Well, let's let's just see. Let's just see what you think. Okay. Um, let's see here. So in, in the book of Job here, in the book of Job here, it says that stars came before the earth. This is Job 38, four through seven. So let me find that really quick. 38, four, uh, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? When the uh, uh, how to stretch the line upon it, the foundations were fastened. When the morning stars sang together, so the stars were singing before he laid the foundations of the earth. That's what it says in Job. Then over here sure. in Genesis, he makes the sun and the moon and the stars. Is right. like after he makes the earth. It says he makes the heaven and the earth first, and then makes the stars later. So in Genesis it says earth first, then stars. In Job, it says star first, then earth. Which one's right? That's, uh, that's, I'm sorry, but that's a lack of uh, critical thought right there, unfortunately. And I, I, I don't blame you. It's the majority of people that are this way. Um, if you read Genesis correctly, in the beginning of God's creation of the heavens and the earth, the heavens is the universe. The earth is a part of that. It's, it's not going to tell you, like, every little detail, but the universe was created and the earth. Um, okay, the universe can be there, and stars are a different thing from the universe as well, right? No, it, it's it's a it's a broad thing. Uh, the stars were a part of the universe. Um, it's uh, the Earth was created and during the unit the the, the it, it came after the universe of creation, but before the I mean after the sun's creation as well. So the sun formed around the same time as the Earth. And that's why you have the earth being empty and like, you know, and then afterward the light, afterward the light came into being with the sun's, the sun reaching the main sequence. I mean, that's how the, the solar system came about, you know, from the creation of the sun as well. I mean, it's accurate, you know, you look at it in a different way. So can I, can I ask something? How, how do you square the order that things are created in Genesis 1-1 with plants being created before light? Things of that nature. Plants are not, plants are not created before light. Yeah, plants plants were created before the stars, before the sun. Yeah. Light right, was created before the sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Light was created before the stars and the sun, and then plants were created after that. Or, or, no, sorry. Plants were before then. So it was light, then plants, then the sun. So how does that yeah. track? You said light, then plants, then sun? 
No, that's, that's what not, it says. Not, I mean, it, it, that's not what it says. You're looking at it in a different manner, and I understand because the majority of no, uh, it, it it says it, right here. It please, David, for for both of our sakes, no. please quit telling me that I'm I'm reading this wrong and just answer the question. So here it says God created light. That's Genesis one three. Then in Genesis one eleven, He brings forth grass and herbs and plants. Then in Genesis one sixteen, He makes the two great lights, one to rule the day and one to rule the night. So He makes light. Then He makes plants. Then He makes the sun. And the moon like so what how does that order work for you that light happened before there was light before there were the sources of light and that plants came before the sun um i mean that's not how that's not how you're you, you're looking at it the wrong way uh the universe is created first and in the universe the earth was created the earth was empty but the, the sun was forming during that time and then it formed and then God said, let there be light as the sun reached the main sequence. And that's how the planets and the luminaries, which are the star, no, the planets and the moon came into being as well around the same time. Um, which is, it, it all makes sense. I mean, if you look at it from a different Wait, perspective. In the David, problem, I, I, huh? I don't understand. Like, let's, like, if we say all of what you're saying is true, that still doesn't fix the problem right. of what the Bible says is that you've got light. And so you're saying that's the universe, the heavens and the earth. And then you have plants. And then the the sun and the moon, the the greater light and the lesser light after those first two things. So where where in light. your sort of understanding do plants come about? Where do uh, so let me explain. So the universe came to being with stars forming, you know, black holes, stars, galaxies forming, all that stuff. The Earth is just a part of a galaxy that exists in one of the universes that came to being, and in, what about the sun? In that that's what I'm saying. In the solar system, what about the sun? in that galaxy, the the sun was forming, and then from its accretion disk, the Earth and the other uh, planets planets were forming, and then the moon came to being, and either by a, a comet or 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 a part of the Earth or whatever. But in, during that time, water was introduced into the Earth. So now we have a, a an empty Earth forming and the sun is not has not that's a different energy. order of operations than what this says what you what you no, just not. said no, is different than what this says it, 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 no it's not it's not it's exactly what it's saying it's exactly what it's saying and then when what God it's saying is different than what it's actually written it's not it's right here in my, right in front of me i'm reading the, the 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 well i guess you would call it the old testament but i'm reading the tanakh or the torah the genesis and so, it says so, that. Okay, okay. David, uh, my understanding of what you're saying here is like you're you're down with the science. You 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 just it described you know the, a general idea of how the solar system is thought to have formed, including the sun and the formation of you know, the moon due to the collision with the planet Theia and all of that good stuff. But but the problem with that is, as far as I can tell, is like all of that is is step one, and then according to Genesis, what comes next is plants. But in Conventional science, we understand that the plants evolve like roughly during the Silurian and the Devonian, right? So no, by the Silurian and the Devonian, we already have the sun and the moon, though. And and what the, what Genesis is saying is that you have the light, then the plants, then the sun and the moon. But by conventional means, we have the the lights, so the stars, then the sun and the moon, and then way later plants. You see what I'm saying? No, because. Um... I see what you're saying, but it it says that let there be luminaries. Doesn't mean that he created again. No, it means that these planets and these the moon and the stars are now signs for seasons, as it says, for season, which we have today. We we even have this thing called astrology, right? That people look for for their personalities or whatever. That's what okay. So what you're saying it's you're saying signs. is that they're 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 named. You're saying that they existed before, but. On three, that's when they're named. Well, at that point, that's when everything was like basically said, okay, well now now that all this come to being, these the moon, the the stars, and the planets will now be signs for seasons and and days or and years. So yes. Oops, and let me correct. ask you a more a more direct question. Let me ask you a more direct sure. question. Uh, animals, okay. all the animals, did God make them out of the water or out of the ground? 
people that came to being from Stardust. I mean, we were all Stardust. They came out from from, from right, but um, like where? Adam's version. Where did that happen? Huh? Came from the ocean. where and how did that happen? Okay. okay, so then you would agree uh, if it came from the ocean, then you would agree with chap Genesis one twenty. Let the water. God said, "Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life and the fowl that may fly above the earth." God created great whales and every living creature that moved with the water brought forth abundantly. All life started in the ocean and evolved out of the ocean right. into land animals. Okay. Right. Yeah, correct, right? Here's okay, excellent. So then you would disagree, then, with Genesis chapter 2, where on 2.19 it says, And from the ground God made the beast of the field and the fowl of the air and brought them to Adam. So in chapter 1 it says he made them out of the water, which sounds a lot like evolution, and then in chapter 2 he made them out of the ground the same way that he made Adam. He made them out of mud. Well, aren't we... So, okay, where did it say that? What verse is that? Because I'm looking Chapter right two, now. verse nineteen: Out of the ground, the Lord God made, formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. So you see, beasts of the field. Where were the the where's the field that is it underwater or is it on land? That's the question right there, right? Because right, but it says point, out of the ground God formed them. I mean, I mean that doesn't change anything from the actual creation. This is. This is now telling you in a play access, we have been formed from the ground. We've been formed from the ground. What do you mean? Yeah, we're made of dust. Are you when you die, do you go into the ground or do you go back into the ocean and, and, and decompose there? Where do you where do you decompose that? So Depends on where you die, literal. I guess. Sometimes it's literal, but sometimes it's allegorical. That it depends, I think, is what David is saying. So he's saying like when yeah. when it when it matters. When it matches what we see in, in science, then it's literal. But when it doesn't, that's when it's allegorical. No, it's no, 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 no. Wrong. Because we, where do we have babies at? Or do we form babies in the oceans? Or do we form them on land? So. There there are cultures that have babies in the water, yeah. That's fine. I mean, but still, like, that's, see, now that's a little bit of bias right there, unfortunately. But I'm I'm being up front here. How is that bias? The order, the order of the creation is correct. I mean. Why do I? Why we have to run around? So, okay, okay. So, David, how about how about you know? I'm I feel like I'm being pedantic here, but let's. It, it, this seems to be the direction that we're going down. So let's go down it. So my understanding, of course, you've got the you've got the book right. You got the good book right in front of you, right? So birds and fish. I'm reading, reading it directly birds, from the text. Yeah. So birds and fish come before beasts of the field, right? And beasts of the land and slithering things and such. Is that correct? Uh, well, it, that that depends. So here it says in, in Genesis chapter one, no. it says the water brings forth everything that has life. It starts with fowls and then it mentions whales. I don't know if it's in order. It's just we're just listing things. Um, and then in chapter two, it says the beasts and the, 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 the birds. And it doesn't mention fish at all. OK, well, I mean, again, it's so... life came from it. Life is all life. You know, it just mentioned the uh, you think fowl. It. Are just birds of today, or 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 are fowl not also the dinosaurs? And are they not? Well, no, they I, certainly I would agree, wouldn't be. No, they were reptiles. But well, but I would, but I like, would agree. Which, which, like, I would include. You could, you can have that. Like we can say that that the birds would include like theropods and and non-avian dinosaurs. That's fine with me. But that still doesn't make sense because the we we see the emergence of mammals in the Cretaceous as well. And what of the synapsids and. Lycosaurs, actually, polycosaurs are synapses. So the synapses and sauropsids are the things that come before, and the tennis bundles and all sorts of stuff like that. Like, where where do those fall in? You see what I mean? Like, I. But which which one? It, it, when, when, when the last part? Oh, tennis bundles. They're like oh. amphibians. They don't come from the sea, but they are. They're not mammals. You see what I mean? They're like they're I mean, amphibians. That's, of, that's all. How that nature is supposed to make sense. If things do not make sense then we would easily know, oh, there, there is no God, He's, or there is a God, I'm sorry, because now we would not have, we would have things that don't make sense, and we would be saying, oh, there, something must have created it then at this point, because it doesn't make sense. Right. But it has to be. Right. So, but but to me, what it seems like you're doing, David, is is I feel like what you're saying is like, I feel like you're you're quite reasonable with regard to the science stuff. I mean, we talked quite a bit about all of this, right. and you seem very reasonable and all that stuff. I think that's awesome. Uh, but it, it kind of seems a little bit to me, and, you know, maybe I'm misunderstanding some things here, but it seems like you're taking what, 
what we know to be true because you you're taking the perspective that the bible isn't going to, to claim anything that doesn't make sense so therefore whatever we see if it makes sense then it's got to be copacetic with the bible and so you're basically kind of tuning your interpretation of the bible so that it is copacetic no. around us is that that's that's no. what it feels like to me maybe i'm incorrect oh no but okay but then again while we're talking about other things that you we're ignoring the whole creation story, which is accurate to how science sees it. And you're trying to, you know, Forrest was trying to pick a different verse to try to take it out of context. And when in reality, it's what happened to the first part, the, 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 the part where the universe came to being, I mean, why is it so accurate? Um, why okay. Is it did, accurate do, do you mind if I, uh, really if I, quickly. Okay. No, go ahead. Uh, Forrest. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Gonna ask one more question really quick. Uh, David, uh, did were animals created before or after humans? Animals before. Animals came before. Everything, uh, humans came way after. Oh. Okay, so then you would agree with Genesis chapter 1, 25 through 27. God made the beasts of the earth after his own kind, cattle after their kind, each thing creepeth upon the earth after their kind, and God saw it was good. And then God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness, and male and female he created them. You would agree with that? Yeah, you said the beast came first and then, the, then man, right. Yep. Yeah, and so that would mean you would disagree with chapter 2, 18, which says God made the, the beasts out of the dirt and then brought them to Adam who already existed so that Adam could name them. I mean, that's 18 and 19, one. chapter 2. Oh, oh, wait, oh, chapter 2, 18 and 19? It's the exact same one that we were talking about earlier. Uh, God, the Lord God said, It's not good that man should be alone. I will make help for him. And so out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what Adam would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowl and the beasts of the field, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then Adam, he, he calls it, causes Adam to fall asleep and takes one of his ribs and makes a woman, which is different than chapter 127, where it says God made man in his own image, male and female, he created them together. So in chapter one, he makes animals first, then makes man and woman together. In chapter two, he makes man, then he makes animals, then he makes women. So which no, one of those is true, exactly. chapter one or chapter two? That would, be, that would be such a sharp contrast. Like it would be so extreme that, so what you just said doesn't make sense. It would, it would have to, it would mean I agree. that, the, that, right, exactly. So it would mean that man, then God said, hey, I'm going to, I formed all these animals for you to name. And he gave us dominion over the animals, right? Which is what we do have today. No, you're close. He by. makes man. And then he says that man shouldn't be alone. So after he made man, he then made the animals. And then after that, he made women. So the creation story in chapter two is that ma hum male humans came first, then the rest of the animals and came, women. then women came. No, nope, that's wrong because he, a helpmate, that's the key word right there. He made a, a someone for him. But men and women already existed, as you can see in the earlier, where it was said earlier that God created man. So that's wrong right there. So the Bible is accurate here. He created... So the, the fact that it's written... So what you're saying is, because I'm not reading this out of order, that is chapter 2, verse 19 through 22, Forest. in order. And what you're saying is that because it's written in that order doesn't actually mean anything because in a different chapter it's written in a different order and that means the one that makes sense to you is correct no they're both correct it's you just course, not looking at it correct I mean, unfortunately I, I, okay david tell me tell me if i'm grasping this it, it, i'm i feel like i might have it i feel like i might have grasped it are you saying that mm -hmm. genesis chapter one is accurate and then genesis chapter two is like a zoom in on chapter one so it's just like it's like tweaking things it's not tweaking things but it's more like explaining things you know for that little narrative for example so in the first chapter it tells you how everything was made in order and it's accurate if you guys actually look at it from a scientific perspective not from a biased perspective you will see that it's accurate Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in here. I'm gonna so <laughs> there's been like 
18 times there's been a point developed and presented to David and then David just kind of responded with shrugging it off and saying you didn't understand. Well, I would love to sit on this merry-go-round until uh, midnight. <laughs> I'm unwilling, so we're going to put a cap on this. Everyone can go. Can I, can I ask David one more question? Can you I ask just one, one more question of David? One more question. Okay, David, is chapter 2, verse 17, and chapter 3, verse 4, are those both true? Chapter 2, 17? You shouldn't, you shouldn't need to read them to know if they're true, because you believe the Bible's true entirely, or at least Genesis is. So, Just because I don't know the Bible by heart, I, even though I'm reading Gen I've read Genesis multiple times over the past few uh, weeks, that doesn't mean I don't know the Bible. You know, so 17. Right. Well, I'm saying if you believe that all of Genesis is true, then you should just flatly answer yes. But I'm asking you the question specifically yeah. about those two verses. Do you believe that they're both true? Chapter 17, uh, 17 were the 2, 17 and 3, 4. Yep. And then 3, 4. Read it one second. I'm going to get some water. I'll be uh, right back. I, I oh, you're, you're going, no, you don't want to miss this. No, I see what's going on. Um, yes. I okay, know. okay, I came back. You're right. I didn't want to miss it. <laughs> All right, yeah, so you I believe do. those are true. Different cool. So for those in the audience paying attention, um, chapter 217, God says to Adam, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. The day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And then chapter 3, 4, the serpent says to Eve, if you eat of this tree, you will not die. And guess what happens in the story? Spoiler alert, they eat of the tree and they don't die. So that means that in chapter 217, God told the very first lie in all of history. And the serpent corrected God and told the truth and said, you will not die if you eat this fruit. So why did God lie? I'm going to say something. Look. I'm going to leave it there. I like you, Forrest, and I'll still continue to like you. Um, I'm not, this has nothing uh, against you, but I, I see what's going on here and how the how different people's minds work. I understand that I'm going to be attacked by the comments because obviously that's how how, how it works on, on any uh, bias. Not you guys, but I'm just saying any people who have a bias, that's how they work. I would love, appreciate an answer rather than more of the same, but... No, no, no. Um, I am gonna get water. I'm just, I'm just talking to Eric. <laughs> See you later, Erica. I'm... Okay, so look, I'm gonna do this on my own. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a reaction video, whatever to this. Can I send it? To sure, you? go for I'm it. I just want an answer though. Why? God told the very first lie. God invented lying, did he not? Okay, I'll, 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 I'll explain it for you. In that, it does not mean that they're going to die immediately. It means. That now, because it says we, uh, in the day that you eat it, you will die. Yeah. So yeah, on the that, within that, twenty four hours, they will die. Humans were already dying at that time, but they even there were only were one in existence. There was only one human in existence at this time. He only made it Adam. Man made it. He had only made Adam. Man already existed. In chapter one, it tells you that man already existed. But then in chapter two, it says he made Adam at a different time. And if you're saying this is a retelling of the same story, which is what you've said several times, then chapter one shouldn't be relevant. Here he's made Adam, and he Adam is the only human in the world. He has not made women yet. And he tells Adam, if you eat the fruit of this tree, you will die on the same day. So did God not just invent lying in that moment? Chapter 127, it says God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. Again, yep. if you cannot see Wait. the differences in a correct, non-biased manner, then I cannot explain it to you. It's it's just it's hard to get into somebody's head when they're just when there's like a, 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 a it's like a bystander effect. Like when nobody nobody wants to be the first one to say, "Oh yeah, you're right," because that's how it works. That's how society works. And if you if people step away from that for a second, then they can things from a different light you know but it's fine so in chapter years. 1 verse 27 in chapter 1 verse 27 god created male and female to get together you're right it says that yeah. he made men and women together then in 2 verse 7 
he makes man from the dust of the ground. Then in 17, he tells man, don't eat from the tree. Then in 19, he makes animals. Then in 21 and 22, he makes women. So it's a completely different sequence. If you're saying that they're both true Wrong. and that number, verse number, uh, uh, sorry, 127 is just a summary of everything that happened in chapter two, fine, we'll grant that. That doesn't answer the question. The pro point here is that he says that if you eat from this tree, you will die the same day. Later in the book, they eat from the tree and they do not die at all. So he lied. That's what I'm driving at. He died later. But they, he did not lie. They do die later. So that's the thing. Okay, no, 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 same day. We're done. We're done. We're done. Okay, we're looping again. We're done. I'm not, oh. I'm not willing to loop again. All right. And that was more than one verse that you guys went back and forth on. We're done. Thank you. Okay. Right. Make your little reaction right, video. Right, well, Goodbye. We look forward to I not watching the reaction video, David. I, I'm sorry. I didn't want to take control that much, but um. <laughs> no, you're fine. I literally had to ask call. Matt to bring the vape because I was like, I I've heard the same loop, I think, seven <laughs> times now. And I literally do not have the capacity to go through it again sober. So this, here we go. This right here, this right here is different than this over here. See, see, see they're different. You see, it's the whole thing. <laughs> but they're not because you're biased and you don't have the capacity to understand right? it. And it's not your fault, but it is you're wrong. And it's your correct. Uh, no. Red your mind yeah. is clouded. Okay. I forgot. I forgot how cloudy my mind was. Hello, everyone. I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer of The Line, and the rumors are true. Forrest Valkai is, in fact, a hostage in my basement. If you would like to contribute to his freedom one day, you can do so by supporting us over on Patreon or becoming a channel member. There are specific tiers for specific shows or the channel at large. You can also send a super thanks. Those are great. You can like, comment, and subscribe. Also, fudge the algorithm. Go to one of these things. The algorithm doesn't matter. It thinks it knows you better than we do. Better than you do? I know you better, Hank. There's a bunch of people named Hank. I just freaked way out. Okay, go to one of these.